You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. Inconceivable words today. Today we are focusing on a lovely word, another shown word, sanctification. What does it mean to be sanctified? When I grew up in Georgia, I would go to my brother's basketball games, and at halftime, they would have someone come out. This was a nice, like, Christian basketball association. Have someone come out and tell, like, a conversion story. You know, they used to do really, really bad things in life. They ran with the bad crowd. They drank alcohol. They did drugs. They were really bad and sinful. But then, and they give a specific date on that date. Let's say it's April 1st, 1989. At 2.45 in the afternoon, all of a sudden, Jesus came into my life, and I am better now. I have improved now. I'm on the up and up now. I no longer run with that crowd. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't curse. I don't have bad thoughts. I'm on this path of basically progressing in holiness all the time. And I'd hear this, and I'm like, well, the problem with that is we've kind of ignored something. We've ignored the symbol. That lovely Lutheran phrase, which is just good, I can't talk sometimes, good biblical theology. Simul justus et peccator. We are at the same time a saint and a sinner. A saint because of Christ, because he died on the cross for us, assumed all of our sins, and we are now righteous because of him. But because of the fall, we are still corrupted by sin. We still have the old Adam daily swimming up to drown us again. So what does it mean to be sanctified then? What is the action of sanctification? And the best place to go to understand this is the third article of the creed in the large catechism. Luther there talks about the work of the Holy Spirit being the sanctifier. And he says this one lovely, lovely sentence. He says, to be sanctified or the work of sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit bringing us to Christ in the forgiveness of our sins. So in the forgiveness of our sins, we are 100% absolutely unconditionally forgiven. We are holy and we are righteous. We are sanctified, meaning we have been set aside in the forgiveness of our sins to receive the holy things of heaven and to live a holy life. And what does that holy life look like? Well, it's daily struggling with sin, knowing the things I struggle with, fighting them, but also knowing that when I fail, not despairing to the point of where I don't believe God could never be merciful to me again, but despairing enough to know and to confess that I can't do this on my own. I can't be holy on my own. I can't do it. God help me. And our Lord Christ does. He comes to us anew and gives us the gifts of the cross, forgiveness, life, and salvation. We are set aside by God to receive the holy things of heaven and to live a holy life, struggling with sin, but resting assured in the forgiveness of our sins that Jesus won on the cross for us. That's the work of sanctification, being made holy, in the declaration of our forgiveness. We are holy, as holy as we ever will be. And now we go through this life hearing that voice of the Holy Spirit every day saying, you are forgiven, you are holy because of Jesus. It's not because of something you did. It's not because you've stopped sinning. It's because all of your sin is covered in the righteousness of Christ. Sanctification, the action of the Holy Spirit bringing us to Christ in the forgiveness of our sins, that we may live a holy life here in time and in heaven unto eternity. God bless y'all, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.